Good morning, everyone. Thanks a lot uh, to Future of Mining. Excited to be here and presenting after Caterpillar. Really enjoyed the talk. So I'm going to be covering uh, how at motion metrics we use uh, artificial intelligence to optimize or revolutionize blast optimization. So um, my presentation first about the problem, what's blast optimization? I'll look at it from the particle size distribution point of view, PSD. And uh, how do we propose analyzing PSD inside the shovel buckets and how it can be used to optimize blasting, which can be the least expensive part of the comminution. Then we'll talk a little bit about the solution, how it works. It has three AI components. Uh, one is on the embedded system, how do we choose the best images from the shovel's digging cycle. Second part is how on the cloud we choose the bucket and the region of interest. And the third one is how we do segmentation using AI. At the end, I show you uh, real field results from different shovels around the world from the logs that I have been collecting in the last few months. So blast optimization. Uh, particle size distribution of the blasted material is very key to, optimi uh, to optimization of the blast. So as you can see, that's the typical open pit mine. The focus of my talk is going to be on the mining shovel. So you got a mining shovel. How do we do measure the rock sizes inside that? So it can be a hydraulic shovel. You can see it has a big rock on the left, top left. It can be a PNH cable shovel, which uh, over there you see one rock, a lot of finds, Bucyrus, or it could be a backhoe, which is quite often used in, in uh, Australia. So very clear problem definition. What's image-based uh, particle size distribution? You take a picture, you trace the rocks. Uh, it could be human-based, it could be automatic. I'll talk about that and you apply scaling. You can see in this image, they are using basketballs for that scaling with some simplification process. So, and then you get particle size distribution of fit things. So, in terms of scaling, you could either use those known objects. Uh, in the middle, I'm using the bucket width, uh, which is the typical for our application. In the case of on the right-hand side, you see a conveyor belt where we are assuming the camera is a fixed distance, let's say two meters, or we can use laser. In the bottom, you see a stereo imaging device that we have device in motion metrics using 3D imaging, so no assumption whatsoever. So the bottom one, the one in green 3D imaging addresses both uh, safety and accuracy concern. That's the best approach, but I'm not gonna talk about it. I'm not gonna talk about the left one, the right, or how good that is. This is a simple problem of how do I do rock segmentation inside the shovel bucket. To go from that, this focus of the stock, to that. And then have the particle size distribution. So the solution, as I mentioned, has three parts. One is on the embedded part. So you have a camera on the mining shovel. The embedded part has one responsibility. Take a good image, send it to the cloud. Either right away or a bit later, because this is not mission critical. The two other parts, one is about region of interest. Let's find the bucket in the image. Let's find where the material is. And the third part, let's do segmentation of rocks. I'm going to explain how we are using AI to address all three efficiently and in an automatic manner. This is supervised deep learning. What you see here is different images from a hydraulic shovel and a Bucyrus shovel. We have developed tools in-house which humans go t uh, spend time on each image of a bucket to, uh, to define whether it's empty or full, different colors for the teeth, background, uh, cape, uh, sides of the bucket, and all that. This is essentially used in the AI network to train the networks in order to do this automatically in the world of machine vision, machine learning. So um, the embedded processing, because the embedded processor, we are busy, we are doing missing tools detection and a lot of other tasks, we have, we have very limited resource. So the algorithm, this is what it does. You see the image on the left, input image, that's a nice one, full bucket. Algorithm does two things. Number two, map of the movement of each pixel between two subsequent images. So if you have a full bucket and you're swinging, the foreground is fixed, the background is moving, we use optical image flow to get that. The right-hand side, we use AI to define probability of any pixel in the image corresponding to a suitable for fragmentation. And that is coming from that supervised learning I talked earlier. So whenever those two have a match, we say, oh, this is a good image. You see the right-hand side. We say, send it to the cloud. 
When you are in the cloud, in the Amazon Web Services or Azure, you have the world at your disposal. You can use any algorithm you want. You can use tons of libraries. It's cheap. You don't have the limited resources on the mining shovel. So this is the first process on the embedded side. Let's talk about on the cloud. Uh, the feature map extractor we are using is taken from the state of the art where uh, Google Photos, et cetera, uses an image to decide whether there's uh, eyes, there's nose, there's lips. In our case, it's not as exciting. We are using the image to see if there is there a bucket, is, there, is it full, is it suitable, is there shadow in the image which is not good. So very similar approach, but totally different application. So we have implemented that. Over here on the cloud, we use many rectangles and to find out which one corresponds on the left side to a bucket, which one corresponds to a full bucket su suitable for segmentation. Whenever we have a match, this could be about 10,000 different matches we are doing. On the cloud, not a problem, cheap. The result is saying, okay, suitable, let's go to the next stage. Over here, you can see exactly that. Uh, that image has been chosen and then next AI decides, say, I'm gonna use a, uh, uh, vertices to find where the region of interest is, but we don't want to go too many vertices because it's going to be hard for humans to correct. So we say with a maximum 12 points, where is the region of interest? And what you are seeing here is the re result of AI. So learning a lot from human labeling. So I promised to show you field results, and here we go. This is an African mine, a hydraulic shovel, the image taken earlier uh, is actually, this is very new, 24th of March. So you can see, that's the result of AI. So I'll go back a little bit. Perfectly got the big rock, small rocks. The blue means finds. If you look at the right hand side, that's the distribution. The green area is where is acceptable sizes happening. The red is like you have oversized, you see those big rocks. And the blue is undersized. So this is an example on a hydraulic shovel. Move on, same hydraulic shovel. You see the material is kind of tilted. This is what AI decided that is good full bucket. And just let me go back. Pretty good. And this is something for about 15 years we have tried to solve it. And finally, AI is being able to address. So previously, we used conventional image processing with a lot of challenges. I didn't talk much about segmentation using AI, but what we have done, we have thousands of images from shovels, from portable device, from um, on the conveyor belt, which we have asked humans to go and trace the rocks. And a typical big image can take four hours for a person to go and trace it. With AI, we are talking about seconds. And there are cases we are seeing the results can even be, and it's a very boring task. It's very time consuming and all that. So here's another one, African gold mine hydraulic shovel again. This is uh, either incise or fines. You can see on the right hand side, image was taken 21st of February. And by the way, these logs are automatically coming to our webpage from the subscriptions we have around the world. Uh, since the beginning of my talk to now, probably 200 more images came to our webpage and all get analyzed in terms of rock sizes. Look at this one. You have a big rock, that's the P100. You can see more than one meter there and good amount in the range and some below. And remember, this is one single image. Roughly every five minutes, ideally we wanna get one image so you can get a good representative images and you don't need to send anybody to the field to do the dangerous job or somebody putting basketballs, take picture, come back. The shovel is digging, we automatically get this happening. African gold mine, hydraulic shovel, you see this is a lot of finds and a couple of rocks. Chile copper mine is a PNH cable shovel. For example, you can see, I don't want to claim AI is doing a perfect job. You see there's shortcomings there, right? But the key thing in that image, if I can go back, we avoided the teeth because our old algorithm, a lot of times the teeth were getting into it. This is another image from a Chile mine, again, is quite good. Remember, it's using the size of the bucket for scaling. If the bucket is five meter, we'll use that. And this is a Bucyrus shovel. It did a decent job. I especially chose some images where uh, it could be some 
miss, uh, miss segmentation, you can see some of these. So what we have done in motion metrics, you see that bottom on the right, which has a pencil, we have developed correction tools. So because on the shovel, typically you get, I don't know, 20 images per day, you can have humans go and correct what the AI made a mistake. So we call that instead of AI, which is artificial intelligence, we call it intelligence augmented. So a human goes where AI came short and addressed that. So IA is used everywhere today. And at Motion Metrics, we are using it in the mining application. And I'm not afraid of mentioning it because AI, as much as everybody is saying is good and all that, it has its shortcomings. So one more Chilean copper mine. Uh, this is back in February. So quick conclusion, particle size distribution inside the shovel bucket is one of the best indications of how good was the blasting. You can take that and say, let's improve, uh, let's have uh, smaller rock sizes or bigger, which is that uh, the blast engineer's expertise. So as you saw, we are employing AI in every stage, from choosing a good image to send to the cloud, to choosing the size, uh, delineating the bucket, choosing the region of interest, and segmentation. Out of all of these, I, I have to mention, segmentation is the hardest job. For 15 years, this, the problem started when in Africa, I had the first system, the camera, the mine engineer looked at the video and said, Sharam, can you use that to tell me what the rock segmentation is? You know what, until that day, I didn't know what rock fragmentation meant. Because my background is mining, zero. So, but since then, we have been working in this problem and finally, with bringing AI into it, after three years of challenging, we have been able to solve it. Uh, I showed the system performance, uh, so field results, uh, showed the effectiveness. We are 100% there, not there yet, like on the backhoe we are having some challenges, so we are updating the networks. But here's the advantage, it's good to take away from the stock. In the old days, you will have an algorithm, you will get engineers to make it better. In the modern day, you say, oh, do I have a bad result? Let's get it properly labeled by human. Let's update the network and optimization. Next day, you have a new version of software. That wasn't possible before. So, and uh, thanks for coming to my talk. We have a booth uh, number 13. Mark Mohija, he's our Australia manager. He's here and uh, uh, happy to answer any question. We are kind of eating into the talk, so my apologies. Okay. Yep. We've got some other sessions about to start. Right. Yeah. So, as Sharim said, uh, they have a, uh, an expo space here. So, any questions, yes. perhaps uh, Please. visit your stand and yep. you'd be happy to, to help out. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.